بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم We continue the explanation of the three fundamental principles and this is class number 22 and uh, <coughs> after the author rahimahullah uh, gave the meaning of uh, al-Islam and which is the submission to Allah by singling him alone as the true God worthy of worship uh, submitting to him in obedience and disassociating oneself from all forms of shirk he said afterwards وَهُوَ ثَلَاثُ مَرَاتِبْ وَهُوَ ثَلَاثُ مَرَاتِبْ meaning Islam is of three levels is of three levels the first is Al-Islam the submission and obedience second is Al-Iman true faith true faith uh, which comprises the belief of the heart the speech of the tongue and actions of uh, of the limbs and actions of the limbs this is an iman and the third level is al ihsan the third level is al ihsan which means perfection of worship perfection of worship and وَكُلُّ then he said رحمه الله وَكُلُّ مَرْتَبَةٍ لَهَا أَرْكَانٍ وَكُلُّ مَرْتَبَةٍ لَهَا أَرْكَانٍ which means that each level has its own pillars each level وَكُلُّ مَرْتَبَةٍ لَهَا أَرْكَانٍ each level has its own pillars then he mentioned فَأَرْكَانُ الْإِسْلَامِ خَمْسَ أَرْكَانُ الْإِسْلَامِ خَمْسَ the pillars of Islam are five and they are شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله and they are first the testification the testimony that لا إله إلا الله none has the right to be worshipped except Allah وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah وَإِقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ and the establishment of Salah وَإِيْتَاءُ الزَّكَاةِ to pay the dutiable amount of charity to pay the zakah وَصَوْمُ رَمَضَانِ and the fasting of the month of Ramadan وَحَجُّ بَيْتِ اللَّهِ الْحَرَامِ and to make hajj to the sacred house and to make hajj to the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so his saying his saying that the levels of Islam are three Islam, Iman and Ihsan this came in the hadith of Umar the hadith of Umar, the famous hadith of Umar with Jibreel alayhi salam the hadith of Umar ibn Khattab relating the encounter of Jibreel alayhi salam with the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and so the proof is the hadith of Umar the famous hadith who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Islam is built upon five uh, the, the hadith of Jibreel rather is when the Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked him about Islam and he gave him the meaning of Islam and the, uh, the, the meaning of Iman and the meaning of Ihsan these are the levels of the deen because at the end the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said when he was asked who was this person he said this was Jibreel he came to teach you your deen and as to the As to the saying of the author, each pillar uh, and each level has its own pillar. Then he gave us the pillars of Islam, which you have heard. And these came in the hadith of Ibn Umar. These came in the hadith of Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, who said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Islam is built upon five. 
the testimony that man has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, establishment of the prayer, payment of zakah, fasting, Ramadan, and hajj to Allah's sacred house as related in Al-Bukhari and in Muslim. Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, said, what's intended from this hadith is that Islam is established upon these pillars. They are the pillars to support the whole structure. And what is intended from this description is or from this simile between Islam and a physical structure is to indicate that no structure can be erected without supporting pillars without supporting pillars likewise Islam can never be firmly established without each of the mentioned five acts while other Islamic actions perfect the whole structure, the strength while other actions other than these mentioned, they perfect the whole structure, the strength. And this means that if these if these Islamic pillars are not there are absent, then Islam will not exist with the person and also it will not exist and will not be present by other missing pillars like missing the testimony of Tawheed and as to the establishment of Salah there are narrations indicating that anyone who abandons the Salah exits the fold of Islam and that anyone who abandons any of these pillars deliberately then he becomes a kafir so the absence of all pillars would undoubtedly ruin the whole structure of Islam and the first pillar is the shahada the testimony and it means the firm conviction that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and this is manifested on the tongue with firm conviction in the heart And it is attested to by the actions of the limbs as well. They conform to what is attested by the tongue and what is believed in the heart. Now this testimony that man has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah is a single pillar and they are a single pillar even though they are two complementary parts La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Why? 
because since all acts of worship depend upon implementation of them together implementation of them together so therefore no worship can be accepted without the first condition of sincerity and purity of one's intention for Allah and that this is comprised in the testification that none has the right to be worshipped except him and secondly following and adherence to the way of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is what is as our shaykh rahimahullah mentioned and this is what is comprised in the testification that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relates from Allah Azza wa Jal and therefore testifying for his messengership and worship is a fundamental pillar of the whole testimony of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Then the author, rahimahullah, gave the evidences for his text, which you have heard. He said, فَدَلِيلُ الشَّهَادَةِ The proof for the testification for the shahada is قوله تعالى is the saying of Allah, the Most High. شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وَأُلُوا الْعِلْمِ قَائِمًا بِالْقِسْطِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ This is in Surah Al-Imran. He cited this evidence from Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 18. Allah bears witness that none has the right, listen to this please carefully, Allah bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped. except him and the angels likewise and those having knowledge also give this witness and he is always maintaining his creation in justice none has the right to be worshipped but him the almighty and the all wise so in this noble ayah which the author cited as a proof Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala the one free of all imperfection, the Most High, bears witness for himself that none has the right to be worshipped but him. And similarly the angels, likewise, the people of knowledge, Ahlul Ilm, also bear witness to this testimony and that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maintains justice and he affirms that with his saying, شهد الله أن لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقص لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم Allah bears witness that man has the right to be worshipped but him and likewise the angels and the people of knowledge bear witness he who maintains justice man has the right to be worshipped but he the almighty and the all wise and in this ayah this ayah as our Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymeen rahimahullah commented, he said it contains a great commendation for the people of knowledge. Why? Since he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs that they are, that they bear witness along his witness and that of the angels. And who are at the forefront of the people of knowledge? they are the noble messengers and this testimony is the greatest testification due to the exaltedness exaltedness 
of the one testifying meaning Allah and of that which is being testified since the witness is Allah and his angels and the people of knowledge and that which is witnessed to that which is witnessed to is the Tawheed of Allah in worship Tawheed al-Ibadah the Tawheed of Allah in worship Here it is to be affirmed that the meaning of La ilaha illallah is that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah. It does not mean that La ilaha mawjood illallah. It does not mean that there is no existing God except Allah. Because there are other, quote, gods existing other than Allah, which people had taken for worship, and they consider as gods, like trees, the sun, the moon, stones, people, and so forth. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirm that he is the true God and that these other entities are false deities this is clearly stated in Surah Luqman chapter 31 verse 30 قال الله تعالى ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأن ما يدعون من دونه الباطل وأن الله هو العلي الكبير That is because Allah he is the truth And that which they invoke beside him is batil, falsehood And that Allah he is the most high, the most great Subhanahu wa ta'ala So the true meaning is there is no true God worthy of worship Except Allah Here we stop so as inshallah to continue the rest of the explanation in the next scheduled class. Wallahu ta'ala ala wa alam wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.